this is like the mecca of real estate in Australia. When momentum's taking you forward and you keep doing the things that got you there. That led me into obviously the best couple of years I've had ever. Most humble guy I've ever met and I've never met anyone else in that position that successful that puts so many people before himself. My <laughs> top three tips. Number one would be within six months um, and started performing extremely well and the work ethic was there, the talent, the skill, and, um, and now he's probably one of the, the highest performing agents in his age group in the country. Yeah, so my journey as a, an agent seems long. It's gone quick, so seven years now. Um, 2012, I left school, uh, moved to England, played football over there for a couple of years, chased that dream. That came to an end quite abruptly. So I was at a bit of a crossroads in 2014. I spent the year working in a bar in Mermaid Beach in a cafe. And I essentially, like the majority of agents I know that have done quite well, ended up stumbling into real estate. Um, wasn't something I was looking at doing, didn't know anyone in the industry. Um, met someone through the cafe and the rest is history. Spent two, three years at another couple of small agencies and then um, I met Michael and I've been at Kalashi now for three and a half, four years. What's the difference between now and in 2019 and 2022? Michael could answer that one, but a <laughs> um, little bit older, a little bit wiser, a little bit more level-headed, more emotionally stable, I suppose. Uh, but I think probably the, mind sh uh, the mindset shift I had when I came to Kalashi and realizing my potential, realizing what actually could be done, always felt I had the talent the knowledge there, I just didn't know how to implement it. And when I came here, my eyes were open pretty quick. I remember sitting with Michael on my second day and we we're setting out our goals. And he asked me how much I wanted to write in terms of GCI and I told him <laughs> and I left the room pretty embarrassed because <laughs> he, he had this shocked look on his face. And I think the figure I told him was something he does in one or two deals. So <laughs> um, I remember calling my mate who was at another agency at the time going, this guy's I told him that he, he said I could do this much and we both started laughing we're like, no, there's no chance. And then sure enough, roll on a year later and it all started happening. I think at that point in my life, the first two, three years of real estate, when I look back, it seems like it went for so long. Days dragged out, weeks dragged out. It's such a tough period and obviously I wasn't doing well. I was trying, I just wasn't gaining any traction. And then you see these successful real estate agents and you look up to them and you hear about them. But it's almost as if it's not attainable, like it's it's not actually real. That so what they're so doing what do you, you think happening. happened or what do you think the difference was between the agencies that you're working with beforehand yeah. and then uh, coming across to Kaloshi and how that obviously yeah. helped lift you from where you were um, in 2017, 18, yeah. 19? leading into 19 and then joining Kaloshi and, um, and what happened then. So what are the things that, that for people that are working for other agencies at the moment or, um, or in the industry and aspiring to get better yep. um, that, that you found you were able to get um, within the organisation that you couldn't get elsewhere that, that helped you yeah. elevate to the next level? Yeah, I think the biggest thing was belief in myself, number one. Uh, that was obviously something that was holding me back big time. But I think because I was surrounded by such negativity as well, when people aren't doing well. And I've seen it from young agents to experienced agents, whether they've been in it 20, 30 years, or whether they've been in it two, three years, they'd always blame everyone else but themselves. So both agencies I were in weren't successful. So it was just this, it was just this negative feedback loop that was constant every single week. Oh, the market's doing this, the market's doing this, the market's doing this. There's always someone to blame. I come to Kaloshi, instantly I, my goals have 4x, 5x in terms of what I'm aiming for. So that belief had changed. But then there was just a positive outlook, even though the market was difficult at the time. Um, it was just that shift in mindset to believe in myself that, hey, I can go out there and get it done. Hey, if I do what I'm doing, I'll succeed. And I think being surrounded by successful people every day is what can push you on. Yeah, the high um, performance culture correct. obviously uh, helps you with your mindset, but uh, the support, the structure, the systems, the training, um, like I think the uh, the businesses and, and the way that we operate are probably a lot more structured than helps people mm -hmm. uh, obviously 
get more time, get more efficiencies yep. and, um, and operate at a higher level. Yeah, 100% was obviously having access to the different types of trainers that I have had over the last three and a half years at Kalashi. So we're getting insight from the best in the country alongside then obviously the most successful agent in the country, which is Michael, and then forming your own plan around that. Because the majority of the time, the wheel doesn't change. Uh, the majority of the time, everyone's doing the same thing. So it was just a matter of me finding out what worked for me. And it was hard because obviously being relatively unknown at the time, I was doing everything I needed to do, but nothing was sticking, but I kept that belief. And if obviously it felt quite powerful having the Kalashi brand behind me, it felt like Superman at times. Um, I just knew if I stuck to it, things would stick. Um, excuse the pun, uh, but they did. It took, you know, probably in 2019, it took two to three months before I actually gained some traction doing what I needed to do. And then had a good period where I started flying took a bit of a sabbatical, went away, came back, did the exact same thing in 2020 during COVID. So it took a little bit longer, um, but that led me into obviously the best couple of years I've had ever. I think uh, it's probably important to talk about your daily habits, your yep. rituals, your discipline, yep. um, because to me, a lot of that stuff is what makes someone successful. Yep. So if you don't have those things, you can be, you can have fleeting moments of yeah, success yeah. Um, where you'll stumble across a few things or mm. some things will fall your way. But I think when it comes down to actually um, having consistency, mm. it comes down to the levels of discipline and the discipline that you have in your your personal life, in your health, yeah. um, in everything that you do. And, and that then goes all the way across your business in, yeah. in the way that you prospect, in the way that you follow up, in the way that, that you're constantly there making calls all the time. Mm till all hours of the night, mm. making sure that near enough isn't good enough, you're giving it yeah. everything you can. Yeah. Probably the biggest decision I made on whether it has attributed to my success or not was when I started putting more focus on my health um, and just forgot about the business. And that was back in 2019 before I came to Kalashi. So I'd already had these habits before coming into the business where I was going to the gym every day, same time, wake up 4.30, going for five, getting there for five, eat the same food every single day consistently, never miss a beat. Um, so that was able to translate. Then it made everything easy. So when I was prospecting or when I was doing what I needed to do or following a daily plan, that side of things was easy. And I remember looking back when I was younger, you know, in 2016, 2015, 2017, trying to implement plans, I couldn't do it. Um, it's almost, it's the same, that saying, you know, you win your morning, you win your day. Um, but I've been stacking. Correct. Habit stacking. So I've been doing that for, you know, the last four or five years now. Same time, same wake up time, get to the gym every day, rain, hail or shine, regardless of how much sleep I get <laughs> um, and eating the same foods consistently. And I think that's transferred over to a lot of different aspects in my life. Um, yeah, a lot of people have it stack and they don't realize, but they have it yeah. stack with negativity <laughs> rather than, and so they get yeah. used to eating bad food and they get Correct. used to not training and they get used to not doing the things that are going to help them succeed. Yeah. And then others, um, they'll have, um, it's like uh, when you read the book Atomic Habits, yeah. um, they will have these positive habits that they introduce into their life mm -hmm. one at a time and then they just keep compounding on them and yeah. until their whole daily rituals are set out with habits that they do all the time. Yeah. And once you stop doing it, you uh, you soon realise that it becomes very difficult because momentum's either taking you one way or another. And yeah. when momentum's taking you forward and you keep doing the things that got you there, then yeah. um, it becomes easier. Yeah. Um, when you stop doing it, momentum's taking you the other way. Mm -hmm. um, it's harder to turn that around and, and to make that uh, pendulum swing back in favour of you. Yeah. So um, I think that's probably a really big part of both Owen's success and a lot of people's success within our organisation and also in, across all industries mm. is that they uh, they have the discipline and they don't go home until it's done and and they will stay there and make the extra calls when they need to and i know that owen and i have had auctions where we've had up to 16 bidders pre-registered the day before the auction that have already signed paperwork so we know that we're well positioned and we're going to sell it and we've got a low reserve yet on a saturday at six seven o'clock at night he's still in there making calls to see if we can get one, two, three more bidders to ensure that we get the best result for the seller. And there'd be very few agents or agencies in the country 
that do that. Um, yet it's just across our entire business yeah. and also uh, one of Owen's disciplines. And uh, and uh, I see it across a lot of people within the team. They they genuinely care about the result. They leave nothing to chance, and they have the discipline to do the work when they need to. And um, so work hard, play hard, but when you're there, turn up, show up, and uh, and when you're away, shut off your phone and, um, and relax and um, and decompress. So yeah. I think going back on that quickly, but touching on that, that's when I realized like Michael's the real deal. <laughs> I'd been, so just that story is told, that was a sale of one short street in Burley Heads. We had the 16 pre-registered. He was in the trenches at the same time on the Saturday night making the phone calls. I don't know any other principal in the country that would be doing that. I don't know any other high or successful person in the country that would go that extra mile knowing that we essentially had it locked away. There was a buyer that he'd been essentially begging for four weeks to come to this property. They wouldn't come. Michael made the phone call, I think, on 8.30, 8.30 Saturday night. He dragged them down at 7 a.m. the next morning. They were the underbidder that brought it from the three, three and a half million up to the five, three, seven, five that it sold for. You know, so yeah, I made calls, but I think Michael made the sellers an extra million and a half. <laughs> so, um, yeah, well, it's the discipline, and I see it across our entire business. And there's been so many auctions that we've turned up to, and those extra calls right up to the last minute, encouraging people to come, encouraging them to participate and watching them go considerably higher than they would have, which drives that extra result for the yeah. sellers. And um, it's interesting. I see sellers uh, choose agents because someone will walk in and they've got a fee of one and a half or 2% and our average fee is 3.3. And they'll go, yeah, yeah, no, we're going to go with that person. But in the big scheme of things, the work that we do and going the extra mile and the discipline that we have drives most of our sellers 10, 15% more in a net position. Um, and it's just interesting that um, that they have the mindset of um, of trying to um, get the best deal on the um, on the uh, listing as opposed to what's going to result in the best outcome yep. for them at the end of it. And and look, we work harder and out outwork and outperform nearly everyone that uh, that uh, is in the marketplace. And it's something that um, we we do just as a matter of fact. And um, and it's it's at our core. Yeah. Oh, look, Owen's definitely matured a lot more since um, since joining the business. Here, he's had the ability to uh, to rub shoulders with a lot of other high performing agents. Um, they all collaborate. They share experiences, training, joint listings, um, and as a result, it's helped him grow. And um, his discipline. Uh, he gets up. He hustles hard. Um, when he's been building his brand, he's been in his marketplace, um, dropping letterbox drops at. 5.30, 6 in the morning, walking the streets, um, introducing himself to people as he goes. His follow-up's been impeccable. He's uh, upskilled himself on his market knowledge so that uh, he becomes the the expert for that location, that area, that suburb, um, and he can confidently talk about all the comparable sales um, and, um, and provide strategic advice to both buyers and sellers alike. Um, so that's probably been the biggest thing. Um, he... Uh, He's grown as a person, um, as most people know. He went off and um, and had his uh, sabbatical there, where he went on TV, and that was something that we sat down and had a conversation about before he went. And I said, you know what? At the time, he was 23 years yeah. of age, and I said, I can tell you for sure, you're going to regret it if you do it, and you're going to regret it if you don't do it. So go and do it. Um, because real estate will always be here for you and you only live once and you can get out there and it'll be something you can tell your kids about um, and give it a crack. Just leave nothing on the table. Don't die wondering. And um, and so he went and did it. And um, and then he came back into the business and had to regrain, regain some ground, which he did um, with a lot of hard work. But um, he built his business from scratch within six months um, and started performing extremely well. And the work ethic was there, the talent, the skill, and, um, and now he's probably one of the, the highest performing agents in his age group in the country. Thanks, boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've done it twice. <laughs> so, um, but I've been lucky enough to build it twice under, you know, I guess under the, the Kalashi brand. And I think people don't be mistaken how far that can take you. Um, in no way I'd be where I am today if it wasn't for that. Um, would maybe I would have, but it probably would have taken twice as long. 
Um, so obviously number one, I'd make sure I'd have a job in this office. <laughs> um, that'd be number one. And then number two, as I said, doing what you need to do. Everyone knows what we need to do. The wheel doesn't change. Um, it's just making sure you're out there and making sure you're in market. End of the day, you need to make sure you're in front of sellers, um, face to face and on the phone. Because if you're not, all the rest of it's irrelevant. I think that's where a lot of agents make mistakes uh, is that they s rely solely on, let's say, a letterbox drop um, or advertising on social, etc. But if you're not face to face with sellers, it's all irrelevant. And then it's just about staying consistent, believing in yourself um, and pushing through, particularly in the hard times, because for real estate, there's a concept called delayed gratification. You could door knock someone today and not actually have anything to do with them in a real estate interaction for another two years. So. Once you come to terms with that and you just show up every day, get to work, um, two, three, four months um, goes by and things will start to fall into place. So essentially doing exactly what I did twice over. I remember what I, the person I was like pre, let's say 2018, I'd never been in the, I've been in the gym maybe once or twice for football, but I'd never actually exercised properly. I was just playing soccer. So the thought of actually me, I used to wake up at 7.45, somehow be in the office for 8.30. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's it's crazy to think. So for me personally, I know, as I said, you win the morning, you win your day. You don't, you, so I wake up, same time, eat the same food, go to the gym every single day, regardless how I feel. And I know that sets up my week. About a year before joining the business. Uh, so I'd always had it in the back of my mind. Always wanted to be here. But at that point in my life, I felt like I needed a year on my own to prove that I could do it myself without being reliant on someone. My fear was going to Koloshi and then whenever things got tough or if a deal was too hard to do that, I'd just run to Michael and try and get it closed. So I just needed that year to prove that I couldn't do it. So I, had, I remember I had two really, really hard deals got them done and that was maybe like six months in. I'm like, yeah, I'm out, <laughs> I'm, go I'm going to Kalashi. And I just remember just looking from the outside in and I think, and I always remind myself of this because it's easy to get complacent and, I, and it's easy for agents to get complacent and to forget where we've come from or to think the grass is greener. But I just remember being on the outside looking in and just seeing this is like the mecca of real estate in Australia. Like Michael's a rock star, the agency is a rock star. And we didn't, like how many people were it when I started? It was 10, if that. So even at that point, I can only imagine what people think now looking from the outside. And sometimes I think I wish I was on the outside looking in just to see what I'd feel now. Um, but that's why I was like, I always wanted to be here. I knew it was the best of the best. My mates wanted me to be here. Everyone wanted me to be here. Just a matter of time. But what makes Clushy unique? I think obviously number one, which is um, a no brainer is the success. But then when you look under that and peel away, when you look at the collaboration within the organization, Somehow Michael's been able to bring in the best agents in the industry on the Gold Coast under one banner. Then he's built agents up like myself, other agents like Jamie, who was doing well, but obviously he's double, tripled his income now. Um, so to bring those minds under one banner is probably unheard of across the country. Then the support, the culture, everything that comes with it, um, because you don't expect that. You don't expect something that's so high performing, so successful to have the culture, <laughs> to have the support. Like normally it's one or the other. Then you look at Michael himself. I remember the last the two last two previous principals I've had, I had bad relationships with them in the sense of how they treated me. So then I remember meeting Michael and I'm going, this guy's the best in the country. He's going to be an asshole. <laughs> I'm like if these guys treat me like shit, I can only imagine what's going to happen here. Completely the opposite. Most humble guy I've ever met and I've never met anyone else in that position that successful that puts so many people before himself and I found that out immediately within the first three four months of coming here I couldn't believe it I remember the first deal I did was uh Monaco Street was it three one three one nine Monaco Street and I remember when that settled <laughs> I mean mama going nah it's not nah no it's not gonna happen it's not gonna happen and then I got Paid immediately, which was rare for me because last two agencies, like I'd wait three months for settlement, then another two, three weeks get paid. <laughs> so when I got paid immediately, I remember me and mom, we were running around the house. I'm like, mom, look, <laughs> it happened. <laughs> so it's funny that 
you all look at it now and you think that's normal and how things should be, but in reality, it's not. You know, at other agencies, the normal things don't happen. So we're lucky to have who we have here. And my <laughs> top three tips. Number one would be to obviously be patient uh, because it's such a – be patient because, as I said before, the amount of time before – that delayed gratification is, is really hard concept for most people to come to terms with. So you might have to put in a six month stint of getting no return to then have a good 12 months. But that 12 months will then get into another 12 months, another 12 months. So number one, be patient. Number two, which is a huge one, particularly for young agents, is to be yourself. I think a lot of them, that's where they go astray is they feel like they've got to almost justify who they are. They'll put on a suit. They'll try, they'll watch Wolf of Wall Street, for instance, they'll become someone else and who they are out of market is completely different to who they are in market. Like the thing that you find with me is who I am right now is who I am with my mates, my family, the boss, everyone, I don't change. Um, and number three, which would be the biggest one would, um, and it comes back to the patience, but it'd be to stay consistent because there's going to be a lot of hard times, uh, particularly if you're in a high performing office where you can almost get swallowed up. You just got to believe in yourself and know that what you're doing today is going to pay off in two, three, four, five, six months. So don't get down, stick to it. Yeah, look, I think um, to avoid complacency, you've just got to keep up skilling yourself. And it's the same way as you go to the gym all the time to maintain your health. Mm. Um, people stop doing the things that got them to their success. So it's really important that you actually um, are constantly training, constantly improving, constantly looking at market trends, um, Product knowledge is, is probably the most important part um, to be able to strategically advise your clients. And age is not a barrier to entry into this um, into this industry. You can be 22, 23, 25, 26, 30, 60, 50, and any age and, and, and be successful. And we see some agents that might come into this industry and stay in it for 20 years before they finally decide, okay, I'm really going to have a crack. And then within a year they can turn their entire business around and become successful mm. and then you see others that they have a good work ethic they're hungry they want to learn um, and they will um, they will become successful at 25 26 27 um, because they're prepared to put in the hours and I think when you're young and you have the energy and you don't have the uh, the uh, restriction of um, of time because you've got a, a family and, and kids and other priorities you really can have a crack in this industry and uh, and and make a lot of wealth and and invest the time and work hard and and set yourself up and buy a few properties and if you do that at an early age then when you get married you can actually have a, a more relaxed life um, and um, and time management can be a lot better and you can share your time between um, your work life balance and um, and so I think that's probably really really important and. Um, so I encourage a lot of people at a younger age to do it, but I do think they need to uh, need to do the right courses. They need to understand it. They need to do a, a traineeship um, and work their way through the industry. And most of the really good agents started at the bottom. Mm. They've worked through multiple areas. They under, understand every aspect of the business so that they can uh, they can talk confidently on it, and they're constantly upskilling themselves. Um, oh, look, starting a business is about having a plan, um, researching the market understanding and uh, what your competitors are doing and um, and being able to position yourself in a niche somewhere and um, and make sure that the offering that you're giving is superior to the uh, the competitors and um, and I think you need to uh, need to do a little bit of research make sure you got enough startup capital to uh, to get you going for the first three to six months and then you build it slowly um, and then back yourself um, once um, once you start to get traction to grow as quickly as you possibly can I built my brand and I destroyed it and I built it again from scratch. So I've got a good kind of insight to it. Um, Michael's helped me a lot with it though. I think the most important thing as I was, as I touched on before is making sure your brand's consistent across all facets of your life. And some people might like the separation between work life, et cetera. But unfortunately, if you want to be successful in this business, it's real estate 100% of the time. That's just the fact of the matter. You go to dinner with friends, what are they going to talk about? 
I hate it, but that's just the way it is. If you, if you want it another way, then you're going to have to find another job um, or another industry. So it's just making sure you're consistent across all facets, so particularly for a younger generation. They're obviously Instagram's a huge thing now. Social's a huge thing. So if you're out partying, you're posting things like that, posting silly stuff on Instagram, then it's not going to translate really across to um, your market well, is it? So... As I said, just making sure that brand's consistent across the board. And then from my perspective, it was always about flooding the market, making sure that I dominated every facet that I could. So listen, I know that no one's going to read a flyer. I know it's probably a waste of money. But the fact of the matter is if I can make my name and my face as big as possible so I can be seen for that split second that they pull it out of the letterbox and put it in the bin, it's a win. And I looked at all my marketing like that. It's just about being seen. Because from my perspective, when no one knew me, I'd won half the battle because I, I'd pretty much in my small area, I transferred every single seller, every single prospect, cold prospect from a cold prospect to a warm prospect just by doing that. So when I picked up the phone or I knocked on the door, won half the battle, they already knew who I was. But none of that, all of that's irrelevant, as I said, if you're not getting in front of sellers and you're not across the phone. So. Yeah, and I think it's really important to be their agent before they need it. Yep. Um, to provide them with hyper-local content information that is relevant to them, that, hey, we've just listed this, we've just sold this, it's in your immediate area, it's comparable to what you own, right. we thought you might be interested to know, here's some market stats and data, and working through that and actually providing them stuff that is relevant to them, whereas... Most agents, um, their ego kicks in and mm. takes over and all they want to do is tell everyone how good they are rather than um, actually providing them with strategic information that is going to be beneficial to them and uh, make them want to reach out to you at a later stage. And no one wants to deal with someone that's got tickets on themselves mm. or uh, thinks that they're, they're too important. They just want to deal with people that are, are humble, empathetic, knowledgeable, have a good skill set and um, and really care about the results um, and the experience that their clients get. And once you understand that, and that's probably the hardest part when people start to become successful is to keep them grounded and make sure that um, that they're appealing to their target audience and that they're not getting um, not getting arrogant or, um, or ahead of themselves um, because um, success can sometimes go to people's heads and you just need to turn up, you need to put in the effort every single day and and just turn up with a view that you're here to help people and ensure they have the best experience and everything else takes care of itself. And whether that comes down to your colleagues, whether it comes down to your clients, um, and you can um, correlate that across every part of your life, um, it'll uh, it'll always work out. So building brand, brand loyalty is actually really important. And I think where a lot of people struggle is they spend so much time getting a lead, um, but they don't nurture it beyond the transaction. Um, now, if the industry as a whole actually started to support and service people beyond the transaction all the way until the next transaction, um, then you'd build brand loyalty. And that's just um, giving them relevant information and looking after them and, and experience and not walking in there trying to figure out what can I get out of this person. It's how can I help them? What level of advice can I give them um, and be there available? Like there's so many people that ring me and talk to me and want advice and um, I will give them advice that uh, is not in my best interest but is in the in the best interest of them all the time and um, that's playing the long game and um, too many other people will try and give them advice that serves their own interest and, um, and that's a short game and, and people quickly find out that uh, you're not genuine and you're not there to help them um, so that's how you build brand loyalty is just going above and beyond to help people with no expectation of receiving anything on the other end. Michael's touched on it perfectly. Having that long-term approach, um, I've probably I feel like I've talked more people out of selling than I have into selling over the years because I've always tried to lead with empathy and do the right thing, and I know it will come back around, regardless if that's with me or with someone else. Um, it's now gotten to the point where I'm seen because that my brand is so strong now as that kind of real estate guy for instance so any young person getting into the market or anyone wanting advice whether it's on development or anything the majority of the time I've got no financial interest or gain from what I do um, or the advice I give however it's all come it all comes back in spades I help someone 
they'll know if someone wants to transact or is transacting, they're going to get me a seat at the table. Um, so it's taking that long-term approach. And as Michael said, um, not wanting to get anything out of it. And it's funny how the world works, the universe works. It comes back in spades almost. So. Perfect. Perfect.